What it is, everyone. We're back with another top five exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. I am Brandy. And today on the top five, it's time to break out the tissues. It's time to break out the Kleenex boxes because we are going to be talking about our top five tear jerkers. These are those, these are those films or moments where even though you've seen it before, it just pulls at your heartstrings and causes the tear ducts to open wide. Mm-hmm. All right, you ready to <laughs> get personal right now? Let's, <laughs> what, what makes let's share. Sense? Yes. All right, I'll start. All right. Number five. Okay. <laughs> I will not be embarrassed about having this movie on my list, but it is Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> because they really get you with the music and everything oh, else. Man. And like, that's Swayze. <laughs> it's so sad. And at the end, when he's like, I'll always be with you, Molly, or whatever. <laughs> Says and he goes into the light. It's like how long, how long uh, he's been, how long has he been hanging out with the living, right? He could have just chilled, dude. He could have been like hanging out with fucking Demi Moore, like pushing pennies up the wall no, for the, like eternity. He has to let her move on now. <laughs> Screw that, dude. And it's I'm very sticking with you. Sad because she has to finally move on. Oh yeah. That's... I know. I mean, this movie is like it just is so manipulative. Yeah. But I think it's really effective. No, well. that's, a, that's a good pick. Unfortunately, uh, when I think of ghosts, I think of the pot, <laughs> the pottery scene where they're like making that's the pot. That's so everything. emotional too. I don't yeah. know. They, they, they call back to it later. You know, um, you have to know how in love they are. True, true. All right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to my number five. My number five is from a film that came out in 1994. I will admit that I cried when Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> fell to his death in the stampede scene of the Lion King. What about later when he's in the clouds? Oh, to yeah, that part was pretty hardcore too. But <laughs> the part where little baby Simba, who freaking caused the stampede, who allegedly caused the stampede, goes up to his dad and is like, Dad, we have to go home. And he goes on top of him and starts pulling on his this, ear. This could be top five Disney tear <laughs> Like They like to mess with you. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> Freaking King Dumbo, Mufasa, freaking the king of the jungle is gone, Bambi, and then freaking like, Scar so comes out of nowhere and he's like, "Simba, what have you done? Run away!" It's like, what the heck? Scar is the worst. Scar, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> All right. Okay. My number five, Lion King. Getting angry Death just thinking Mufasa. about it. I know. <laughs> All right. Number four. Okay. I, I had a hard time not basically just making like this whole list about cancer movies. Like, <laughs> cancer movies really get to you, you know. Like it's a slow death. Like the characters always like keeping it secret or something like that. Right. Which is what happens in this film, 2003 indie from writer director Isabel um, Cochette. I think is how you say your okay. last name. My Life Without Me, starring Ooh. Sarah Polly. Um, mm. she gets a diagnosis of, mm. you know, terminal cancer. She has like three months to live and she decides not to tell anybody, mm -hmm. not to tell her husband, not to tell her two little daughters who are so cute and to just try to, you know, get her, get a list of things she's always wanted to do done. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's the obligatory scene of making tapes for her kids to listen to later. But Why are you covering so your face? <laughs> Trying to hide it's the tears. so sad. She makes them a tea for every birthday up until they turn 18. Oh, man. And, I mean, it's, <laughs> oh, man. it's really well done, actually. I mean, it's Sarah Pauly. Like, she's a great actress. She can carry almost anything. And mm. I, 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 love, I love this movie. And I saw my way through it. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. All right, moving on to my number four tearjerker. Uh, my number four is a film from 1989. It's the scene in Glory where Denzel Washington, who plays Private Trip, gets captured for quote unquote escaping the the uh, group and freaking gosh darn it just because it's protocol just because it's part of the rules they rip his shirt off and freaking start whipping him. Oh man. Okay, a few things, okay? First, <laughs> the reason why this is so like heart-wrenching for me is because one Matthew Broderick, his character knows that he, this shouldn't that this is wrong, that this mm -hmm. is completely inhuman. This is not how the way you should you should, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is not the way you should treat a person who voluntarily joined the army to freaking free his own people. And then that moment where Denzel Washington freaking stone face lets out one freaking tear <laughs> down his cheek. It's like, just give him the Oscar already, man. Oh, Alan. Oh, that movie, Glory, I tell you, man. <laughs> I mean, every time I see it, it just chokes me up right here. I can, I can see that. I know, I'm tearing up. Uh, I'm not going to make it through this. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let's talk about another cancer movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, movie from this past year, I thought it was great. It's about cancer, 50-50. <laughs> oh. I cried my way through this movie. Like, it's just, like Joseph Gordon-Levitt's performance, when he's coming to terms, he's like, I think there's a pretty good chance I'm going to die, which mm -hmm. we've known since he got his diagnosis, mm -hmm. but it takes him a long time to actually accept that. And the scene when he tells his therapist, you know, I'm starting to come to terms with this is, I mean, it's great. And then you get all the touching moments of like their friendship between him, his character and Seth Rogen's character. So it's like you're oscillating back and forth between like mm -hmm. sad, touching, sad, touching. <laughs> yeah. And it's all very, very, very well done. Yeah. Uh, I love the script and I love the mm -hmm. performances. I really thought this was one of the best movies of last year. Oh, and I won't yes. spoil how it ends, but great movie. If you haven't seen it yet, it's out on DVD now. You should totally watch it. Right. Yeah, that movie is that movie is great. It was part of my top ten. Joseph Gordon Levitt was <clears throat> absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. in that film. Uh there is a certain I don't I mean, yeah, it's a new film, so I don't want to really want to give away too much. Yeah. But there's a scene where something happens and the characters kinda of want to be like, Hey, can you give us like a few more minutes? And it's like, No, it, it has to go through. And yeah. it's like, Hold on, give me a few minutes, <laughs> you know. Okay. Moving on <laughs> to my number three tear jerker. I don't know what it is about me and animated films. <laughs> But when I see the opening of Up, it's like, holy crap, dude. It's like, okay, you see these two kids, they meet. It's like, oh, everything's happy. Oh, they're like sharing a life. They, they're planning this great adventure. And then life kind of gets in the way. They have to spend their money on a broken house, a fixed tire. It's like, oh my God, you know, just let them do what they want to do. So and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, wait a minute. Why can't that, why, why can't she go up that hill fast? It's like, oh my God. And then just that all the scenes. Yeah, yeah. And then just how Carl ends up where he is. It's like, holy crap, man. Like, why? Why can't he just... Pixar. Go! <sighs> Pixar, you did it again. It's like... <laughs> Oh, man, I can't even talk about it. It's a good pick. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> More disease. <laughs> More disease. <laughs> My number two, another, uh, it's a movie I've talked about before, um, based on the true story of poet John Keats and his love, Fanny Braun. Bright Star from 2009, mm. written and directed by Jane Campion. Um, beautiful love story that, you know, if you know anything about John Keats, I guess a lot of people probably don't going into it, but, um, yeah, he's gonna die of tuberculosis in his 20s before they can ever be married and even, like, consummate their relationship. Oh, man. And there's this, this scene at the end of the film when she gets the letter that tells, like, he's gone away to, like, try and get better or whatever, which is what people do when they have tuberculosis and they mm -hmm. don't... You know, and but he takes horrible care of himself. He's like in some room in the city, and then she just gets this letter. We don't even like see him die or oh. anything, and she just collapses weeping on the stairs, and it just shows her weeping oh, for like man. a full minute. And you're crying, like I'm sobbing my way through. I mean, and he knew this was coming. I knew oh. it was coming. I knew they were never gonna be able to be together. But <laughs> Tuberculosis ruined a lot of lives. Damn. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me so angry to think about it. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, let's move on to more disease. <laughs> My number two tearjerker is pretty much the entire film of Awakenings. Oh my god. It's like, <laughs> that movie's so good and so hard. Oh, uh, Leonard, man. Why? Why did you have to contract this disease where he becomes catatonic and he pretty much loses his entire life? Oh my you know? god. The scene when they're like, you're like 40. And yeah. then he's like, looking he's like at 40. He's, he's like, he's 13 years old. Like, I'm old. It's like, oh my God, that's crazy. And Robin Williams' character, Dr. Uh, Sayer, right? All he wants to do is help these people. That's like his passion. That's all he wants to do. And just to see these people, like, you know, trying to, you know, be normal, but then the disease starting to take over. It's mm -hmm. like, oh my God. And then the scene, the scene that really gets me, the scene that really gets me is when. <laughs> 
Dr. Sayer is watching that video he took of Leonard, and he tells uh, the nurse that he's working with, is it, am I a good person for allowing this person to have life and then just to have it taken away? <laughs> Oh, it's rough oh, stuff. It's it like, really is. Holy crap. And another one that's based on a true based story. Based on a true the story. The real doctor wrote the memoir that yes. the film is based on. It's sad, but it's a beautiful film. <sighs> Great Amazing, movie. amazing performances hey, Marshall, in it. Marshall, why don't you make movies anymore? Yeah, why? Come on. Uh, crazy times. Okay, <sighs> my number one. You already said it. It's up. I mean, seriously, <laughs> this movie. Yes. When I, I saw it in the theater the first time with, like, a bunch of friends, right? First of all, the entire theater gasps just during that one moment when you realize from that two-second fleeting scene that they're never going to be able to have kids. Ugh. And by yeah. the end of those, like, nine minutes, just crying. Just absolutely crying in the theater. It's yeah. It's so like, effective. See, what, what usually happens in films is, like, you usually cry with characters, like, near the middle or the end because you get to know them a little bit more. Pixar did it, like, in the first 50, genius, 10, 15 genius. minutes. It's and like... then, of course, and then it's it's a very funny, sweet movie all the way through. And then in the end, it's I kind of tearing up again. Like, as they're just, like, like, sitting on the curb, like, bonding and, and you know, that they have this relationship that kind of fills a gap in their life for both of them the and part, it's so sweet the part that really gets me is when carl's looking through the book of like you know it's empty and everything like that and then he starts seeing pictures of him and his wife and then at the end it goes thank you for the adventure oh. now go out and have your own it's like oh it's so amazing i'm gonna watch that movie right now <laughs> okay okay Calm it down. All right. Serious catharsis. <laughs> Moving on to my number one tearjerker. I decided to go with a happy tearjerker this time. Yes, it is the classic. The end of It's a Wonderful Life always freaking gets me, dude. But like, it's even before the like the very end scene when everyone's being all nice and he's like, ah, but even right before that, when it starts is when he's like, please let me live again. I yeah. want to live again. And oh, you're just it's, like, oh, it's amazing. George. Like throughout most of the film, freaking George Bailey, all all he wants to do is get out of that freaking town and do big things. But what he doesn't realize is that he's already doing big things. He's already the richest and man then in town. Freaking Mr. Potter, dude, <laughs> takes his money without even telling him. It's like, what the heck? Freaking evil Mr. Potter. He's the worst. And man, yeah, that last scene when, you know, the entire town comes and, you know, pays off his debt. And you're right, that part where his brother, the freaking war hero, comes back and lifts up the glass and goes, To my brother George, the richest man in Bedford Falls. It's like, he is the richest man in Bedford Falls. It's like, how can you not watch that film and not freaking cry, dude? It's like, it shows how good freaking humanity can be sometimes. I, I need to wipe my tears off. I'm sorry. I need to wipe my tears. <laughs> okay, let's bring this to a close before Alan loses himself. Yes. <laughs> been another top five here at mcguffinpodcast.com uh, you can see many other ones that are usually don't involve crying <laughs> at mcguffinpodcast.com let us know your favorite tear jerkers yeah. it's okay to admit it people mm -hmm. <sighs> and we'll see you next time later